having so much fun. Pamela, Pamela Armois, what are you going to do today? I'm going to be having so much fun with all of you, painting some amazing watercolor florals in a very light and loose fashion. So we're going to paint flowers. We're going to just have fun with the watercolor and see what happens. And so you don't really have to have any drawing skill or any, you don't have to be able to nope. do anything. You just be able to have fun with watercolor, right? Exactly. I love, love it. it. I <laughs> love, love it. it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get this show started. Let's do it. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rhodes. Welcome to Art School Live. We try to bring you artists from all over the world to teach you one specific thing. Today, we're going to teach you about loose watercolors and painting flowers. It's going to be so much fun. We're here every day at 12 noon Eastern time, and you can subscribe on YouTube. All right. Just we'll tell you more about that. Our guest today is Pamela Armois, and she is incredible. What's nice about this is you don't have to have a bunch of drawing skills. You don't have to have this sense of, I know how to do everything perfectly. She's going to tell you how to get in there and just play with the color and play with the paint and really, really have a terrific time. And, and I am so looking forward to this because I just feel like I need to loosen up sometimes. And there are a lot of folks out there who are like, I don't even know how to do any of this. This would be fun for you. I think you're going to have a great time. So today uh, she's going to actually do this painting. She's going to show you how she does it. and It's going to be really terrific. So as I may or may not have mentioned, my name is Eric Rhodes, and I'm the publisher of several art magazines and newsletters. And we are here every day at 12 noon. You can subscribe to this thing uh, at on YouTube. Now, uh, we have a, a gift today. Uh, you're going to be able to win a pair of value specs, which help you see color. Uh, actually, they take the color out and they help you see values. And to be able to uh, see values is really important in learning to paint. And they make great Christmas presents. So we'll have that. All you have to do to win that is to get into the comments and say something. And the best thing to say is, I'm watching from wherever that might be, right? So we have people watching from all over the world. So tell us where you're watching from today. The winner of the last prize uh, that we gave away is Dave Patrick in Banning, California. We have for you today a wonderful video, uh, watercolorlive.com slash 100 one tips. It's 101 watercolor painting tips, tricks, and techniques. Uh, you can you can get this for free from us. Just go to watercolorlive.com slash 101 tips. And to subscribe, remember, go to YouTube, look up Art School Live. Okay, now I think she is, I think she's set up and ready to go. Pamela Armois, are you ready? Hello. 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 Welcome Hello. back. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, so this is our wonderful painting that we're going to be working on today. And it's um, a group of flowers that I've uh, put together. Um, it's a very light and loose sort of interpretation of uh, some tulips and some lilies. So as you can see, I've got, uh, let's back this out just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. There we go. and. Um, I'm going to be starting uh, doing uh, these light and loose uh, florals. Uh, usually I start these with doing a tonal sketch first. Okay. So I do have that. I do, even though it's intuitive and it's, it's very loose, I like to go in and do a little bit of a pre-plan for it. And then I do uh, practice petal shapes and things like that. So I would say the uh, most important part of this is just um, trying to keep your white space. So um, we don't want it to fill up everywhere. So I'm going to show you how I, how I do that. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to this. All right, great. What are these little marks that I see? Okay. So there's no drawing, but I do like to put down um, areas that I'm going to actually be positioning the flowers, the uh, sort of uh, main flowers. And since these are tulips, I'm going to be putting them um, 
just in a nice sort of arch. See, I'll be putting the centers. So it just gives me a little bit of a base. Plus I always put a dot in the middle uh, and that just tells me where my center is because I don't really want the um, vase to go that high on it. So um, I'm probably gonna bring my vase in a little bit down here and maybe there. So I just kind of put like these uh, preliminary marks in. So let's get started. I'm going to go in with some water first, just plain water. And I'm coming in from the sides because I wanna keep my center area uh, free of water. If I go in with too much water in the middle, then I've got a problem with that filling up and um, I wanna keep some of the stem work nice and crisp. So I just go in with a little bit of water in the middle. I love to splatter, so the more splatter, the better in my mind. And now I'm gonna start with a little bit of color. Now, because I don't draw first, um, it's kind of important for me to keep an eye on um, where my spaces are between the water. I don't, like I said, I don't wanna fill it all in. So I don't really wanna go in and spray it. A lot of watercolor artists go in and they spray first, and that's not something I really wanna do. I wanna go in and just, there we go. So it gets a little messy. And if you feel like you've got too much water in some areas, I usually just take a, a damp paper towel and I spray it and I might just lay it over it just a little bit. So it kind of helps to uh, pick up a little bit of it, but not too much. Now this, um, I do need a little bit more over here because I picked up a little too much with a paper towel. Now let's take a look at where I had those tick marks. I usually do the tick marks in um, a water-based graphite pencil. So I like my sketch and wash for that because it's not gonna stay permanent. So I don't have to worry about erasing it. And uh, then I'm gonna just go in with a large brush. I always work large to small and light to dark. So my lightest, largest area is the background. So let's go in and um, just get a little bit of color down for where I'm gonna be putting those florals. And it's gonna move around a little bit. That's uh, all right. The more it moves, the better, I think. There we go. Maybe a little bit more up there. And then I'm gonna start tilting it and moving it a little bit. Now, the, there's sort of an important part to this where we uh, let it just sit for a little bit and um, then we come back with a little bit of, uh, we're gonna pick up a little bit of uh, water with the uh, paper towel again. So the key is really working, working it really wet. So I'm just sort of establishing my background. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit more alizarin crimson. This is so much fun. Oh, good, I'm glad you like it. It's very um, intuitive, it's very light. Um, a nice light way to uh, paint.
And if you start losing a little control, that's the whole, the whole key to this is not losing too much control. So it looks like your blotting rag is wet. Very not, wet. Not dry. Tell me no, why. It's, it, right. It's pretty wet and I keep it damp. Uh, what I try to do is just cycle throughout the whole piece. So when I cycle something, I, um, I try to work on multiple areas at the same time. So let's go in with a little bit of more of a yellow green. I'm going to put in the, um, the base. See, it's interesting because there's no drawing involved. No, it's you have work. to, no brushwork. The brushwork happens uh, in practice. So you have to have a good feel for, um, uh, you know, a, or a good routine actually for, you know, wanting to practice certain brush strokes. So Gary is asking, how do you decide what green to use? Well, I would go in with something that's transparent. So I use a limited palette. So I like my alizarin crimson or uh, more of a cool red because I'm going to combine the cool and the warm reds. But not a lot of warmer, my, uh, not a lot of the uh, warmer cad reds right. yet. Just a little bit so it gets to mix in. This is a, sort of my base layer. Turns out it was Helen Lewis us using, using Gary's account. Sorry, Helen. Oh, it's Helen. Helen. Oh, hi, Helen. There we go. Now, if you're watching this and you've never painted, you can do this. Absolutely, exactly. you can do this. Absolutely. And and come out with beautiful outcomes. That's right. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to start adding some darker tones and I'm just using, uh, I usually use Viridian as my mixing color. So we're going to just go in and, and play with that. Just start adding. It's all very wet. You um, need to be working a lot with wet and wet in this, uh, in this particular area that I'm working in right now. But if it starts to move too much, just put it down, just put down a paper towel. And if it gets too dry, what do you do? I add a little bit more water to it. I usually mist it. I have two kinds of spray bottles. I have a mister, which is what this is. And then I also have a larger spray bottle, but they it leaves larger uh, drops. You know, drops on it. Yeah. Can you, can you show your bottle, your, your mister on camera? Just hold it in front of the palette. Oh, the oh. mister. Yeah. It's just a regular mister. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. This, right. It gives a smaller spray. What I try to do in the beginning is just to add texture. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> I'm right. just here to add texture. A couple of you in United Kingdom watching. Al Allersford, UK, uh, Ireland, Prince Edward Island. That's not UK. Mm -mm. Welcome, you guys. London, north, north of London. All right, I'm going to go in and just darken up. So the way I go in and I just darken it up is I just add, I'm just adding uh, pure color to it. I let the color mix on the uh, paper but I have a nice foundation. If it starts to move too much, I just go in and I either lift or I uh, put down a little bit more, um, you know, paper towel to just lift it if I don't want to lift it with my brush. And let's just add a few up here. So the reason why I, um, I do a little preliminary sketch is that I have a idea as to what my composition is going to be. Now I have to just get in here and do a little bit more with my darks. And 
Let's add some of the yellow. I'm going to use a um, CAD yellow uh, medium, but it's going to be um, very light. And I know that this is pretty opaque, but if I go in with a little bit lighter color, uh, excuse me, if I go in with more water, it, um, it won't be a problem. It'll, I can still layer on top of it. Hey, welcome South Africa. Man, you're pulling them in today, Pamela. Oh, I did send something out to everyone. I sent an invite, so. Oh, nice. Thank you. Nova Scotia. You guys, make sure you put somewhere something in the comments today. You have a chance to win a pair of value specs. Oh, and this, I love the way this is going. I'm going to do this tonight. It's so freeing. It's absolutely so freeing. Hello, Surrey, England. And so I'm going to cool that that a whole world is together, making art together, watching art together. I think it's so exactly. cool. Exactly. All right, I'm going to go in with a flat brush now because I want to. Um, as Will I you show back, the I... difference to our viewers in case they don't know what's a flat brush versus the oh. kind of brush you were using. This is a calligraphy brush, a Chinese calligraphy brush. And then this one is a flat brush. Uh, it's about a one inch flat brush and it's um, synthetic as well as uh, natural hair. So the key is, is to have really good control working wet into wet. Now I'm gonna go in with a nice dark green. I mix that with um, my Payne's gray, which I use instead of a black. But I'm just going in and letting it and trying to establish um, some areas that I want to um, accentuate my um, some of my flowers. So you put Payne's gray into your Viridian green to give it that darker color? Yes. Okay. You can add a little phthalo if you want it to go a little bit more blue, but no, I didn't want to do that on this one. Yeah. Phthalo also, is a danger color. Yeah, also notice I'm keeping my point of interest right in the middle, yep. right here. Yeah, point of interest stays right here. Okay. Now, notice how she's tapping. Show again, give us another example of how, she's how you're tapping, Pamela, to create the stem. Mm -hmm. She's not dragging her brush. I'm just, you're right. That's very um, effective. It also makes it more interesting because it breaks up a little bit. Well, we could go in with a, uh, also with a, I uh, do this with paper, like a torn piece of 300 pound paper. And you can also go in and do smaller lines, which are also a lot of fun. And you can also pull the line. Yeah. So we have that. And every painting I do on these is different because the water is moving around so much um, that you kind of have to just sort of see what you get yeah. and then make adjustments. It's it, So you sort of follow the plan, but then at some point you have to walk away from the plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, because you have, it's just going to be, the nice thing about flowing watercolor like this is you just don't know what you're going to get. Get yeah, right. Hey, you guys, if you're watching and you're going to try this, when you get done watching this sometime today, tonight, put something in the comments because I want to see you try it. Oh, that would be fun to see. What I love about lessons like this, Pamela, is that um, there's so many people who watch who don't believe they have any talent. They don't believe they can paint. And when they see something like this, they realize they can. Oh, absolutely. You're a great teacher, too. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to get in and just add a little bit more texture. So I do that with a palette knife, regular palette knife. Many times I turn it upside down. And you also get a fresh look when you are doing this. When you go to turn it right side up again, you get a nice fresh look at what you've just painted. So 
it's always good to turn your art in different directions. There we go. And I can also see Helen some asked, how do you decide uh, the colors you're going to use? I use a limited palette. So I use an American palette and a European palette, What's which that is, mean? uh, that means my American palette is CAD red, CAD yellow light and ultramarine blue. That's my American palette. My European palette, I use two separate palettes, but I interchange the reds, the yellows, the blues. My European palette is alizarin crimson, CAD yellow medium and a, a phthalo blue green. So why and do you I, call it a European palette? Uh, I think that the colors are just richer. <laughs> They're very rich. They're very old world. So Lizard yeah, but why Crimson, not just say I'm using different colors? Why? Are, so you're you think that it came from influences of Europe? I'm just trying to understand. Well, I learned how to paint in watercolor um, and mix uh, paints because at when I was a teenager, I worked for an art restorer. And so these palettes are, the, and he called them American palette and European palette. I see. Okay. And, and they were, um, the uh, Renaissance artists used to use these palettes. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure why he called them that, but right. that's what he called them. Hello, Northern Norway. Kristen says it looks easy, but it's not, but it's beautiful. I think it's, I, you're, you're right. I mean, it takes a long time to learn how to do this, but you have a better shot of trying something like this than trying to draw a face or a vase. Mm. Now, I also, I will go in with pencil just to see where I've got some uh, flowers forming. So I definitely have a flower here and I definitely have a flower here and I have two smaller flowers and maybe a smaller flower up there. So I actually really, really like that. So I'm just going to accentuate one of the petals here. And then I'm probably going to accentuate this petal. I don't get into too much um, uh, pencil in my drawings, but if I am going to add it, I'm going to probably add it now, only because I want it to blend in a little bit with the color that's already wet. Okay, so let's uh, keep going with some additional um, splatter. You have to keep sort of feeding that background because it's it keeps moving, and when it um, if it's too wet, it's just going to you know dissipate into the background kind of thing. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a little bit uh, more. Um, color kind of going in there all the time. I don't want too much red in that background, but I do want some. And the, uh, I don't know if anyone can see this, but the warm and the cool of the reds is very, very helpful. And it helps to enhance both the colors. Greetings to Lyon, France. They say it's cold there. Yikes. Kind of cold everywhere right now. It's very cold up here. And you are where? Where I'm in Norfolk, Connecticut. Okay. Let's add a little bit of orange to this as well. We're just going to go in here and then maybe down in through here. Is there a color you would not add that would kind of screw up the feel of it in this case? Uh I'm not, I'm going to keep away from blue. Yeah. I'm just going to keep away from the blues and purples. It's, I actually, when I'm doing these, it's a really good question. Actually, when I am doing these, I like to keep the colors relatively simple and not too, um, too colorful. I found that if I make them in multiple, multiple colors, it, it just doesn't work. I need to keep it uh, relatively uh, not simple, but like blues and purples and greens, you know, that, that's sort of the way I go. So this is my warmer tones. I'm going to add a little bit of my um, Viridian full strength in there. 
So you're being asked uh, by Lindsay if you have a favorite color for florals. <laughs> uh, favorite color for florals would probably be um, this particular combo of the red with the um, with the you know red and green, just because they are opposites on the color wheel. So it's um, bright. I love reds and pinks and going to add a little bit of a little bit more there and there hello italy a couple people in italy okay nice hello You're all right so i in. kept okay go ahead i just said you're pulling them in okay great uh, i'm gonna go in now and just add some um very fine uh petal marks these are just the sort of some hint of petal veins i don't usually overdo it too much on that but um it's just going sideways that's too dry if it gets a little dry that's when i go in and i missed it with my fine mister so um i've had good luck with misters and I can keep a painting pretty wet without it moving too much um, for quite a while, for hours sometimes. Hmm. Um, I'm going to add a little bit. Too much water, I assume. Pardon me? The key, I assume, is too much, not too much water. Right. Not, not overdoing it. Right. Well, you have to kind of stay in control of the watercolor all the time. That's kind of how That's it goes. Just yeah Can't really control watercolor yeah right it's the only medium that sort of moves itself yeah. and do you have a favorite uh flower that you like to paint or do you do uh, probably yes peonies peonies are my warm-up flower i've probably done 300 they're they're my warm-up flower if i go to the studio and i just don't feel like painting I'll sit down and I'll say, you know, I'm just going to do a, a peony study. And I do those. And uh, they really, it loosens me up. I never go to, into my studio and just sit down and start painting. It just doesn't work that way for me. Well, I have to do. That's a great tip. Yeah. I always kind of just go in and um, just have fun. So there's a question about what kind of paper you're working with. And okay. you know, one of the things that I think is confusing for most of us who are learning watercolor or might not know is you go in and you see different kinds of paper. You say cold, you see cold press, warm press, you see rough. What, uh, what are the differences? What are you using here? Uh, the, this is a, um, this is definitely 140 pound cold press. It's buckling. So I didn't stretch it, but, um, it's a, a Fabriano Artistico, which Ooh. is not my usual, but I had large sheets of it that I need to use. You don't want those sitting around for too long, you know? Works, yeah. yeah. Works. And so it was a big size sheet and I cut it into quarters. And um, so that's what I'm using. And it's, uh, it's not the rough, it's just the regular 140 pound, okay. but it's the bright white sheet. It's and not the- But you, you said know. something about you didn't stretch this one, but do you normally stretch your papers? Uh, and, sometimes, and, yes. And how do you stretch a paper? I uh, soak it for uh, two to three minutes, and I put it on a board. I use uh, I don't use gator board or or uh, anything thin. I use a plywood, and I uh, tape it down with a gum tape. And then, as I'm putting it down, I just kind of uh, you kind of squeegee it with your hands. It's yeah. hard to describe. Yeah, it's a it's a good process though, and it's um, uh, it's wonderful. And then you let it dry naturally. You don't don't put a blow dryer on it or anything. What's the benefit of stretching paper? It won't it won't uh, buckle like this. See how this is pretty buckled. Oh, okay. but you know it's um, it's it's okay uh, to do that here. It's just that I'm working super wet, and it as long as I have it taped really well on the sides, which I do, it um it will lay flat at the very end. When now, I, what if you're you know, painting on a block, you know, where they have the blocks kind of glued together on the edges, will that buckle? 
Um, they buckle a little tiny bit, but nothing like this is buckling. But um, I, uh, I don't usually uh, uh, use the uh, larger of the uh, blocks. I like to literally get the large sheets and just cut them down. Okay. There's another one from Ireland. There's several from Ireland today. Uh, if you're new to this, we're here every weekday at 12 noon streaming live. Uh, doing art lessons with different artists every single day. We've been doing it since COVID began. And uh, we did it seven days a week for seven months, the first seven months of lockdowns. And then we've kept it five days a week since then. We've had uh, literally millions of views. Hello, Argentina. And, um, and uh, if you want to subscribe, we'd appreciate it. That'd be nice. On YouTube. All right, so I'm kind of um, just winding down with this. Here we go. Let's just add a few more pieces here. I, I usually like to take my um, my pencil. This is a graphite an, uh, sketching wash, so it's water-based. And sometimes I just put it in the paint. And I'm just going to have a couple of other um, flowers coming very low. So I've, I've got some that are, I'm not going to fill in and I have others that are filled in. Nice. And then I'm going to make some centers right here. There we go. And I'm going to add a little bit of black. My black. Tell you what, Pamela? Yes. Before you do that, because I know this is kind of a crescendo moment, yes. Um, let's let me just take a quick break, tell people a couple of things, and then we'll be right back. Does this sound like a plan? Yes, it sounds great. All right, good. And you need to get away. Always step away, right? Never hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way. It's a good thing to step away and then come back. All right. Also gives you a chance to let things dry a little if you want that. Hey. Uh, welcome. I see a lot of new people here today. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I'm Eric from Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. Uh, we're here every weekday at 12 noon. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up. And the thing I want to tell you about that's really exciting coming in January, it is the world's largest, that's a tough claim to make, by the way, uh, the world's largest watercolor event online. What I love about Watercolor Live is that everything that you can possibly imagine, whether it's portraits or figures or landscapes or flowers uh, and every style, you know, if you want to be right, like really, really detailed and tight, we teach you how to do all that. And if you come to the essentials day and you've never painted or drawn or any of that, we kind of go through all of that and, and really boil it down to the basics. It's Watercolor Live. We uh, would love for you to come January 
24th through 26th and the Essential Techniques Day on the 23rd. Uh, you could still get discounts at Watercolor Live and you can use the discount code ASL for Art School Live. Use that discount code and I don't know what percentage you get off, but you get something off. That's cool. We also have coming up the Plen Air Convention. Uh, the event is uh, going to be taking place in the Great Smoky Mountains and um, at Cherokee, North Carolina. It's five days. And it's incredible. Uh, five stages uh, teaching everything you can possibly imagine, landscape painting uh, mostly. Uh, and then we go out and we paint together. So that's the Plain Air Convention. So make sure you check that out. Okay, I'm going to get back to Pamela now. Here we go, Pamela. Hello. 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 Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, I'm not going to go in with the black. I decided it moved around a little bit. I'm going to go in and I've got a lift for tone. So I have two ways of doing that. I can do that with a brush. Re repeat what you said. You said lift for tone? Lift for the correct tone. Okay. Exactly. So um, a tone is like a value. Um, so you wet your brush first. I just wet it. It's damp, but it's not a lot of um, water on the brush. I just want to lift in a few areas to get a little tone. If that's not working, I'll go in with a damp paper towel and just press it a little bit. because I want to create somewhat of a shape with the floor, flowers. And that looks pretty good to me, actually. I'm just yeah. going to leave it that way. I'm not going to get into too much more detail. And um, I'm going to add my centers, which I'm going to do in my Payne's Gray. And I do that at 100%. 100% so, meaning 100%, really thick, not, really not a lot of water in it. Almost right. Almost like it's right out of the tube. Most of the paints I use are tube paints be just because I like to keep the consistency uh, nice and damp. It's perfect for what I need. And I'm just going to go in and it just makes the flowers so much more believable. And it, it just, it's perfect for what I use it for. So let's do another one here. One up there. Okay. Yeah. I'm what you're asking about the cost of watercolor live, um, I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head, but if you go there, uh, you can find out. But I do know this that if you were to hire uh, 24 of these master artists, and if you could even could and try to get uh, their time, it costs you thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, it's somewhere in the I don't know, $300 range or something, which is it's pretty cheap when you consider you pay six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a three or four day workshop. It's pretty cheap. It's all online. You don't have to spend any hotel money. Um, Rosalie is asking, do you always leave some of the flowers just as an outline? Uh, not always, but you sometimes I do. If I feel like there's uh, this has got a lot going on with it. Um, but I just want a little suggestion of, of another little sort of um, floral flower um, in the background. So maybe uh -huh. that's on the, on the back side of it. Now I'm just doing a little splatter. And for the splatter, I use an acrylic brush. It's Why? a small brush. And um, I like it because the bristles are nice and stiff uh, versus uh, doing this with a um, toothbrush. It's, it gives me better control of where I actually want to put the splatter. Wow. So I'm just doing a little bit of brown. And my brown is um, burnt sienna. And it kind of just tones down some of the bright colors that I've got going on. I do, as you can tell, I let a lot of the colors mix right on the paper. I don't. Uh, get into too much pre-mixing on the side. I keep my palettes um, pretty, uh, you know, separate from the other colors. Those are pretty big dishes. These are sushi dishes. Oh, perfect. So I use sushi dishes, a couple sizes. Um, these are the, that's the smaller one, but they're, uh, I think they're like five by seven. 
So you can really get some good, good mixture into the, into the. Right. And what's nice about these too is um, if I want the color wet, I go here. If I want it dry, it stays up on the sides. I can't turn this sideways because it'll all fall out. But Oh, do it. I want to see it happen. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but um, it'll all fall out and uh, we would have an issue. But if I keep it up on the edge, um, they stay nice and uh, dry. So I never thought I of that. Yeah. You know, every day we learn something new on Art School Live. Oh, my. Okay. And who doesn't love sushi? Right? So I don't know. Yeah, All right, let's go. do a poll in the in the uh, in the in the comments. <laughs> sushi yes or sushi no? <laughs> I'm not going to try and bias the poll. Okay. Um. So we're we're kind of getting to the end of this one, and I'm going to do a final mist. This is a fine mist over. I want to ask you a question while you're doing that. Go ahead. What if I want, in, in the one that you were doing originally, you had a lot more glass showing in your in your vase. Oh, what if, okay. What if you wanted to get that sense of having, uh, having a transparent glass? How do you do that? Um, I would go in with a little bit darker color. Sorry about that. I probably should have just no, I'm just added curious. a little bit more. Yeah, just go in and you can add a little bit more. Oh, so that's the rim. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to actually go in with more of a detailed brush. Okay. See, aren't you guys glad I'm here? I always ask all these questions. <laughs> there you go. And I usually add in a few more um, stems that go through the glass. Uh, it, it's... I paint these very similar to, uh, you know, a traditional watercolor. It's just that I work with a lot more water. So I do add the detail and texture, but I just do that at the end, which is pretty standard. So that brush is a rigger? This is a, yeah, this is a rigger. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of no sushis in here. Really? Oh. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of yeses, too. Oh my goodness. Well, I had sushi for dinner on Friday night, so I guess I know you know what I I do. Mhm. Mm and then I'm just going to add a few more in through here. Where do you get sushi dishes? Oh, uh Online. These I got at Pier 1 Imports, but I think you could probably get them at IKEA. Oh. Yeah, but then you got to wait in line. <laughs> I'm sure there's a, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's got to be other places, but once you, once I, I did it this way, I never wanted to go back to a regular palette and in watercolor, I really like working on a ceramic palette versus a plastic palette for mixing. It just yeah, doesn't work as well. You know? Well, the paint <laughs> separates on a plastic palette for some reason. Yeah. Well, Exactly. I use, a, I use a, a travel palette that's plastic. I should probably get one of those metal ones. Yeah. And I use a, a ceramic palette in the studio. I've been painting watercolor a lot this, this year. Oh, good. But not as beautiful as this. All right. Now I'm going to go in with a pink. So I mix my pink using... Uh, my cool red and my warm red and white. So I've made almost a gouache with it. So you're using the white as a gouache? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. So you, you save that for last because... It's so opaque. Yeah. Yeah, it's so opaque. You can't really paint over it. But it just needs that little pink this needs pink okay see and if i were to just keep uh splattering alizarin crimson or let's say you had a lighter pink uh not a lighter pink but a um 
totally transparent pink, like let's say Matter Lake, Genuine or Opera Pink, it's just going to keep fading into the background because it's so damp and wet. But these make them turn into like a little bit of a gouache and they hold. It's holding really well. Hmm. And then let's do another one over here. Really makes the painting just right. adding that, that little element. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's add a little bit more, uh, a, a stem or two over here. Okay. In the comments, who's going to try this today or tonight? By the way, you can win a prize value specs for leaving a comment. We might pick you, whether you're live or replay. Okay, now I'm going to go in with some white. And I you love Chinese white. What's the difference between white and Chinese white? Well, um, there's different kinds of whites in watercolor, just like there is in oil paintings. There's zinc, there's titanium, you know, uh, and some are more opaque than others. So uh, I like to use the Chinese white and it's a really nice consistency. It's a semi-transparent and uh, it holds really well for me, meaning I can put it down and it's not going to spread too much. I don't get into using gouache. A lot of watercolor artists I've seen um, you get into using the gouache, but I don't, I don't really, I think it's too heavy. And I, I wouldn't use ink on it. Just, that's gaining a lot of popularity. All right, so I, I'm pretty close to done, Eric. Wow. That, yeah. That's uh, well. That. Everybody, give her round of applause, thumbs up, smiley faces. Really, <laughs> really nice, Pamela. Okay, thank you. Well, why don't you come back on camera so everybody can meet you? Oh, okay, great. Okay. Our guest is Pamela Armois, and uh, now you know how to do loose, intuitive watercolors. And what a great opportunity this was. Uh, Pamela is going to get on camera here in just a second. So thank you guys for tuning in today. It's really been fun. And, and Pamela, it's been wonderful having you. Um, I don't know where you disappeared to, but there here you are. are. <laughs> here I am. All right. So we've got your, your Instagram handle on there. And of course, we put all your information in the chat box so you people can sign up for your classes or, or anything they want with you. You are a true inspiration. I am so happy that, that we found you and invited you today because you really got us, got the, got the chat moving. Everybody's excited. Everybody's going to try it. You right. are, uh, you're a hero. I, I feel wonderful to be here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, you really have uh, done a terrific job today. That's a beautiful painting. Uh, thank you so much. I encourage you guys to try this because I think, you know, the, my, my whole goal of this program is to get people painting, to get people to overcome that belief that you have to have talent. Obviously, talent is something that's developed by tenacity, right? By trying things, practicing, learning, growing. It's not something that most people have naturally. And, and, and Pamela, I'm sure you feel this way too, that most of the artists we know had to learn. It's a process. It's a system. And your process just makes it so easy. So we're really, really glad you were here today. Thank you. All right. Well, thank All you right. so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, that was really terrific. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for being here. I want to remind you guys, Watercolor Live is coming up in January. If you want, uh, if the whole thing seems like, oh, that's too much, too overwhelming to do three days, um, first off, it'll blow you away if you do that. Because what happens is um, this stuff just kind of hangs out in your brain after you watch three days of it. It's what we call immersion learning. And when you're doing immersion learning, it comes to you later when you need it. And so it's there. You're getting it. You're absorbing it. And you're getting repetition of concepts. But if you can't do the full three days, we understand. We do have replays. So you can sign up and watch three plays if you can't because of work or whatever. But there is a 
uh, Essentials Day, which teaches you a lot of really essential techniques for various forms of watercolor and different approaches. And so that's the one thing that's a must. If you do nothing else, do the Essentials Day. You'll get so much out of that. I personally, I was not a watercolor guy. And now I have become a watercolor guy. And I am actually really, really happy with what I've been doing. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've just learned it on Watercolor Live last year. And um, I've been the host of the event. And so I picked up a lot over the years. And each year, I just continue to get better and better. And it's really exciting for me because I have been an oil painter and I love oil painting. I, but now I paint watercolor, pastel, and gouache. And so it is so much fun for me to get that variety. It shakes up my brain, makes, makes things interesting. And um, then I'm not quite so bored. I'm trying a lot of new things. And what I'm learning is that the techniques of one often apply to the other. And you never think about those things, but you learn them in watercolor and all of a sudden you're using them in oil. It's different. So it's kind of fun. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. We're here every day at 12 noon. Remember, if you want to subscribe, just go on to our uh, YouTube channel, Art School Live. And also, if you give me a follow, that'd be really terrific. Just follow me at Eric Rhodes. And that's me. Thanks for being here today. And if you're new, come back. We'd love to have you back. We're here every day, 12 noon, every weekday, 12 noon. And you can find hundreds of these shows, anything you can possibly ever imagine on YouTube. Art School Live. Goodbye.